What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at universal functions in NumPy. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at universal functions in NumPy. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at universal functions in NumPy. And NumPy comes with a whole bunch of functions that you can use for all kinds of different things. We're gonna start to look at some of the main ones in this video, and then I'm gonna show you how to get a list of all of them so you can just go through them and find the ones that you want when you need them. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below as well as linked to the playlist with all the other NumPy videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic starter code here. We've imported NumPy as MP, as always. And I'm just calling this fun.py, short for functions, I guess, whatever. So let's create a quick NumPy array. I'm just gonna call it MP1. And this is gonna be an MP.array. We've done this lots of times. And inside of here, I'm just gonna go, I don't know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. And there we go. So right off the bat, let's just print this guy so we have it every time. So let's just go through some of these functions. Universe, they're called universal functions or ufunks for short. I kid you not, that's what they're called, ufunks. <laughs> so uh, we could do stuff like find the square root of each element. And generally speaking, when we use these functions, they're gonna do something to each element in our NumPy array. So here, if we just wanted to print this guy out, we could call mp sqrt, and then inside of this function, just pass in the array you wanna do something to. We only have one array, it's mp1, so we can just put in mp1 right there. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C num directory, and let's just run python fun.py, and you can see here's our original array, and here's the square root of each of these elements. So the square root of one is one. The square root of two is, you know, roughly that. We can see the square root of nine we know is three, we can see spot checking that looks right. So very cool, very easy and uh, super useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out. Next, let's find the absolute value of our functions. There's all kinds of times when you might wanna find the absolute value. And these are all gonna be like np dot something, whatever the function is. And in this case, we're gonna use the absolute function. And again, we wanna pass in np1. So actually we don't have anything negative. So let's just uh, let's go what, I don't know negative three, negative two, negative one, and zeros, just so that we can have some absolute values. Absolute values takes, you know, the distance from zero. So negative three, the absolute value will be three. Uh, and regular three, the absolute value will be three, because it's, you know, three from zero. So we put some negatives in there just to make it look a little more interesting. So save this, head back over to our terminal, run this guy again, and you can see here's our original, and here's the absolute values for each of those things. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna comment that one out. Next, we can find the exponents. Very easy. And you guessed it, mp.exp, short for exponents. And again, we wanna pass in mp1. So let's save this and run it. And so you see, we get the exponentials for each of these items. Very interesting. We can find min or max. Very useful. Oftentimes you got a big long array of things. You wanna find what's the biggest number or the smallest number in that array. We could just call MP dot, say for instance, max, call MP one. We could also call MP dot min. Go, run this guy. So here's our original, the max is nine, sure enough. The min is negative three, sure enough, that looks good. We can find the sign, either positive, or negative, right? So let's go print np dot sign. And again, pass in np1, save this, head back over here, run this guy again. And you can see this returns negative one for negative. It returns a zero for zero, which is basically neutral. And it returns a one if the thing is positive. So all of these guys are positive. So it's returning one for each of them. All of these are negative. So it's returning negative there. So it's returning the sign and this is how it does it. So very cool. We can do trig functions, right? So we can go like sine, cosine, we can do the log, all that good stuff. So if we wanna print here, we could print np.sine of mp1, 
save this, head back over here, run this guy. We get the sign of each of these things, kind of cool. Uh, we can get the log, but we might, this might throw some errors because we've got some negatives and a zero. So uh, if we want to find the log of each of these things, very useful, right? We could see, yeah, yeah we're getting all kinds of errors, but it's still returning NAN for not a number. So negative three, negative two, negative one, we get NAN, NAN, and NAN. Uh, zero is infinity, right? So we're getting infinity there. Uh, we're getting some errors, but you can see it's still at least outputting the stuff. So that's cool. And uh, all there is to it. So those are some basic functions you can play around with. Like I said, there's a master list of all of these if you want to kind of just reference it or bookmark it or check it out in the future. If we head over to a web browser and we just Google NumPy docs, universal functions, but you can see here's the documentation. It's numpy.org. It used to be different. They just recently created this numpy.org. It used to be like, I don't know. Well, let's see. It's probably listed here somewhere. Yeah, scipy.org used to be the old documentation. It looks like they just kind of made it look a little nicer, but it's the same documentation either way. So here you see universal functions. You can read about these if you want, uh, but you come down here, scroll down here towards the bottom. And here we get a list. So here's math operators. You can do add, subtract, multiply, divide all the things. Negative, positive, you can find the power. Absolute, we looked at that one. Exponential, we looked at that one. The log, we looked at that one. Square root, you know, stuff like that. Reciprocal. Trig functions, all the trig functions you could think of, sine, cosine, tangent arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, et cetera, et cetera. Go through all of those. Bit twiddling, you probably won't mess with those all that much. There's comparison functions, greater, greater than or equal to, less, less than or equal to, not equal to, equal to. Very interesting. Logical and, logical or, x and, x or, all that good stuff. We have floating functions. Kind of look through those if you're interested. And that's pretty much it. Now you can go through each of these and learn more detail about how these worked, but you know, we don't really care all that much. Most of these are self-evident, but if you really want to dig into this stuff, this is where you can do it and uh, pretty cool and pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com and I'll see you in the next video.